But now the weakness of man, we want instant results. You know when they tell you, become an instant millionaire, you must know it's a lie. Believe me, if it was so true, the guy who's printing the whole thing, why he is suffering financially, only Allah knows. <laughs> I always think of it, you know, I, I've stopped for a moment where the little lottery cubicles are sometimes. And they say, become an instant millionaire. I say, sister, can you give me $50? She says, I don't have. I say, well, you offering people to become a millionaire here. You don't even have 50 bucks in your pocket. Allahu Akbar. It's the mind. It's the way it's advertised. It's the way people say things. It's the way the world has made it look. But believe me, it is not the right path. There is nothing like becoming an instant millionaire. No. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us the ability to become spiritual millionaires instantly. What that would mean is, if I have promised to turn now to Allah and to make an effort in the right direction, I've achieved. I've become an instant multi-trillionaire. Believe me, there is a figure called decillions. It will, you will become a decillionaire. Allahu Akbar. If you, know, if you want to know how I know that figure, I mentioned it the last time I was in Malaysia. I come from Zimbabwe. We've used those figures. MashaAllah. We have used them. So now the person makes dua and they say, Ya Allah, cure me and so on until someone comes home and says, you know what? You are sick. I have a cure for you. Okay, what is the cure? I tell you what, I will take you to X, Y and Z. They know what they're doing. So now you go to their place and it's a person, everything is looking superstitious. It might be disguised as spiritual to you. You're about to give up your faith. Allahu Akbar. Why? Let me explain. Brothers and sisters, when you don't have wealth, there are two ways to earn it. You can either earn it lawfully or unlawfully. Unlawfully, you will become rich, but you regret it forever. If you have stolen, you become rich, but you regret it forever. Lawfully, it takes time. And sometimes, you know, a lot of effort, profit and loss, days of stress, days of no stress, but you enjoy as it comes. You know, you, you, you spend it in the right direction. You help others. You, you enjoy it within limits and so on. And you know that it's a gift of Allah. It can go at any time, but it is prolonged. You will have to work for years on end before you realize your first million. And thereafter, it might be slightly easier to have the next and the next, you know. So that is when it comes to wealth. Two ways of doing it. You can either legitimately earn, which is prolonged, or you can illegitimately achieve, which might be instant, but it is wrong and it will result in long-term regret. The same rule applies with your sickness and illness. You can either have your cure in terms of medication, which is correct, yes, together with dua and calling out to Allah alone and probably asking others to make dua for you, which is something we're allowed to do as Muslim. You're allowed to ask others, please pray for me. And you're allowed to even tweet it out or put it on Facebook. I'm not feeling well. Please pray for me. The people of the world may pray for you. You can be cured through prayer and through medication. Subhanallah. The minute you want to go to someone who is going to throw three bones at you and tell you that your sister-in-law has put magic on you, that is the very moment that you have done the same thing that the thief has done when he earned a million bucks and solved his problem, but he will regret all his life and even in the life after death. For some reason there is dead silence here. Allahu Akbar. Let's hope that's not happening to us. The biggest deviation. Those innocent people are being accused by someone who claims to know the unseen. Do you know how they operate? I will tell you this evening in order to equip you with that knowledge. They have a link with the jinn sometimes. That too is prohibited. Allah says in the Quran, وَأَنَّهُ كَانَ رِجَالٌ مِّنَ الْإِنسِ يَعُوذُونَ بِرِجَالٍ مِّنَ الْجِنِّ فَزَادُوهُمْ رَهَقًا In Surah Al-Jinn, Allah speaks about it. Allah says, part of the things that are mentioned, He says, and from amongst the issues that are taking place, there are people from mankind who are seeking assistance from those of jinn kind and those of jinn kind are leading them further astray. That's a Quranic verse. Open Surah Al-Jinn and read it. 
يا معشر الجن قد استكثرتم من الانس I love that verse because it wakes us up Oh jinn kind you have made enough fools out of mankind Allahu akbar one of the translations of that verse Oh jinn kind it's enough what you've done you've already taken a lot of these people and hoodwinked them so they would seek the assistance of a jinn who will immediately communicate with the Qareen that is with you. Qareen that is with you means when Allah created you, He created your soul and put it into a uniform known as your body. This uniform, you're going to take it out when you die and your, your soul will continue. I hope you understand the way I've worded it. Yours is the soul. Allah has created it. He put it into this uniform known as a body. When you die, you remove your uniform and the soul is gone. With that uniform, two other elements. There is an angelic angel, an angelic force, and there is a devil. That Qareen from the jinn kind, he communicates immediately with that jinn of the man whom you went to go and see. And you know what? He says, this sister has a pinched nerve at the fourth uh, uh, you know, vertebra at the bottom of her back, and it's in the left corner. If you are just to give her, for example, this piece of paper and tell her to take five roses and cut their petals into that which is not more than 0.01 grams and take 16 lemons and cut them into quarters and put them around those petals and take the piece of paper and burn it and push it into the center then I will actually flick out that pinched nerve so this man with a big beard, mashallah, pink turban that is as long as ever, mashallah, you know, huge item. And he tells you, say subhanallah. You say subhanallah, subhanallah, subhanallah. Say alhamdulillah, say alhamdulillah, alhamdulillah. Right, now let me tell you what's wrong with you. You need to take this, these petals and these lemons and this piece and do this and do that. And you need to do everything together and you will be better. So you say, shukran, jazakumullah khair, you know, mashallah, this man did not take any money. Nothing happened. He took your iman. That's what he did. And sometimes he doesn't know because his diamond is also that Chinese one we spoke about. <laughs> Subhanallah, it's a fact. So now what happens? You come and you do all that and suddenly you are better. You are better. Well, you will be better. Why? Because the devil has cured you. You stole your cure. The devil, the jinn knows exactly what happened. And the jinn knows exactly where you are standing. Subhanallah. So you were cured. Your back is cured. Mashallah. Now that man is a saint. Do you know that? And you send so many people to him. But Allah says, hang on. Do you know you can even earn money through stealing? Do you know that? You become an instant millionaire through robbery. But that does not make you a person who did something right. No. You will say, wow, I got the money. But it does not make you right. So you're saying, wow, I'm cured. But it does not make it right. You will be cured but you suffer the consequence of it. What is the consequence? They will put a tag, they dangle something. The first thing they did, they will laugh at Allah and have insulted the messenger to say, ha 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 ha. You told them to put their head, your, their head on the ground. We promised you we will deviate them. Here they are. They're ready to cut lemons and they're ready to put roses and they're ready to do things that made no sense for us, not for you. Do you know? They just took away your iman. They made you worship the devil and you don't even know and you're happy. You're still saying Allahu Akbar. Allahu Akbar. May Allah grant us understanding. So now they will tell you, do you know who did it? A member of your family did it. Why do they say that? Every time by default, that is the answer. Sometimes they will pinpoint a person's name. They will show you, look up into the wall. When you look up, you see a face. Wow, hey. No, I'm not joking. I'm honest with you. You'll see a face. The face. Hey, that's my sister-in-law. Okay, right. I know. I know what happened. Wallahi, that was the jinn. That's all. What is the job of the jinn? To break your family ties. That's point number one. Go and read the hadith. Allah explains it through the blessed lips of that messenger whose mission was to show you how Allah wants to be worshipped. And here we are thinking, wow, you know what? This is true. I've seen it with my eyes. And then they tell you, no, you know what? Just read a lot of salah. Read a lot of salah. So in your heart, you're thinking, subhanallah, this cannot be wrong. The man is telling me to read Quran. He's telling me to read salah. 
But now I hate my sister, I hate my sister-in-law, I hate my mother, my mother is a witch, and my auntie is a witch, and everybody else is doing so much witchcraft, and I am the person, everybody is against me, and everybody is bombarding me, and nobody has done anything, nothing at all. They are innocent people whom you are accusing, because you have worshipped the devil. Allahu Akbar. And we become so deep in it, that we cannot do without it, my brothers and sisters. That's not how a Muslim should operate. Pray and keep praying. I have seen the power of prayer. It will deliver you from whatever you have been suffering from. Believe me. But you need to be constant. Maintain it. Turn to Allah. How can we want Allah to cure us when we are on the wrong page? Sometimes forget about the wrong page. We are in the wrong book altogether. Allahu Akbar. And we want Allah to cure us. What type of deviation is this? Wallahi, we should understand. If someone claims that X and Y did it, let me tell you. And I'm telling you because I know what I'm talking about. If that jinn was told you are lying, the jinn will change the name. If the jinn says, Abdullah did this to you, you say, you are lying. He says, okay, Abdurrahman did it to you. <laughs> say, no, you are lying. Okay, Fatima did it to you. You are lying. Okay, Khadija did it to you. That proves that the jinn is a liar. Allah says, the jinn is making fools of you, oh man. And we are busy saying, no, he told the truth. Because you don't know how that man operated. The man who gave you the answer, you don't even know how he operated. But this is what they're doing. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless us.